Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. We're looking at a 1973 Admiral SK2237. This is a 12 inch color TV hybrid. Half tube, half solid state, even though it very proudly denotes solid state there. And instant play but that's not the same as instant on. It just means that when you turn the set on, the sound immediately comes up. Now, many of you know, who are longtime subscribers to the channel, that I did a video on this very television 10 years ago. And if you look in the description, I posted links to those videos and basically the long and short of it was is that no matter how much I re tried to reform the capacitors and tweak and mess with and all this stuff, it just produced an awful picture. It didn't work right, and I mothballed it because, like always, I have way more work than I know what to do with, and I had other things that took precedence over the time. So, it got mothballed, and it's been sitting in a shed for 10 years years and you can see the lovely buildup of filth that's accumulated over those 10 years and so we're going to get back into this set and I'm going through a process of culling through and getting rid of stuff I don't want and keeping things that I do want and I intend to keep this set only because of some silly sentimental value that it has to me because there's some link to a past part of my childhood in which this was a set in a thrift store. And I remember the thrift store. It was on Broadway in Lemon Grove, where the Goodwill is now, and they would forever have old TVs like this out for sale in the 1980s and 90s that were pennies on the dollar. They just wanted to get rid of them. This was one of those. And it never ended up in my possession, because although I had the money to purchase it, my mother at the time said, you already have too much crap, no more. But I was really attracted to it. I liked the weird, iridescent, glowing blue front panel here and all this stuff. And it's, you know, sentimental. Anyway, in 2011, uh, Video Karma member Tim Poloniak? Poloniak? I can never remember how to pronounce that name correctly. And I'm sorry if I butcher it. Offered this set to me. And uh, for a very reasonable price, including shipping. And so I jumped on it. Checked it out, blah, 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 and fast forward to now. So, what we're going to do is attempt to service and repair this set to good working condition. So, the first thing I have to do is take the back off, check the CRT, because I sure as hell don't remember its condition, and we'll go from there. Okay, so here it is on the inside. And already I can just see the lovely fun we're going to have with these controls. These are all the ones that love to get the little tin whiskers. Bell fuses. That's probably your low voltage transformer for the uh, solid state bit of it. Compactrons. There's our horizontal out and our damper. I'll need to remove them to take a look inside on the flyback. There's your convergence assembly, your CRT. Let's see, what do they use here? This is a 12 VASP22. And this is a mixture of parts. You see parts that are made in Japan, you see parts that are made in Taiwan, you see parts that are made in the U.S., which is kind of weird. Uh, interesting. Do not operate with picture tube DAG grounding wire disconnected. Transistor damage may result. Okay. Yeah, let's see here. Get a better view of this. X-ray warning. HV is not adjustable. Normal is 20 to 23.5. It's European current, blah, blah, blah. Yada, yada, yada. Okay. And let's go back in here. You can see the IF stage and video stage is completely solid state, as is the color. 
And then when we get over here into the vertical, you've got your vertical uh, output compactor on here. This is probably your oscillator. This is AFC, that's probably your horizontal oscillator output damper. Yeah, let's uh, remove these. That got a little toasty. And there's the safety latch for the cage. Let's take a look inside the high voltage cage and see what awful condition the flyback is in. It didn't look half bad. No melty wax, no uh, signs of scary burning. Let's see, that's a 3DF3. Pretty sure I don't have one of those as a spare. Let's see. No tube chart or anything anywhere either. And they make that a chore to put back down. Oh yeah. So one of those. We don't want you to take it apart, so we're going to make it hell to reassemble. Yeah, I'm going to need two hands for that. So, um, let me flip it up on its face and see how much of the underside we can see. There is definitely some evidence of prior service. Somebody's uh, soldering there for sure. Lots of flux on that. It looks like crap. That's been resoldered. And that solder job looks totally different than that one. That one looks like garbage. That one looks great. Then you come over here, you got another garbagey one with a bunch of cold joints. Did I like not look at this part? Jeez. <laughs> yeah, da -da -da -da. Various transformers here. Maybe that's a choke. That's probably a choke. That's probably a transformer. That's probably a choke. Here's your delay line. So yeah, that's uh there's a big dropper resistor there. Those like to open up. Interesting. Okay. Well, I suppose the next thing to do is to uh, check the CRT. Maybe I can fish my ESR meter in here and just kind of check these guys briefly. Maybe they're, uh, it's worth giving another power up, or maybe we should just say forget it and just shotgun recap this silly thing. Alright, on to CRT land. Alright, so we got our belt run here today. I don't have my fancy tester with me. So we're just going to have to deal with this. This is the BR2 adapter. don't know if this one's going to work or not. Let's uh, bring the voltage up. Let's see if these do anything. We got blue, red, and green. They're finally coming up slowly. Red and green are a little tired. The little dot there, right there, that indicates an OK tube. Red's starting to come back up, so. I don't have my fancy tester to check for cutoff and stuff like that, so I really don't know what kind of condition this uh, CRT is in overall. Let's uh, turn it down to 5 volts and see what happens. And everything just kind of immediately plummets. Oh, the green's really bad. So this CRT is not in great shape. Let's see if we can give it a little clean omatic. Oh yeah, it's liking that. Especially that blue one. Wow. You figured the good testing gun would have been better. Okie dokie.
So that's definitely a, a difference. At 6.3 volts, it pretty much pegs the meter. 5 volts. Nothing's budging now. So it's a... Yeah, once more cleaning. Yeah, it woke it up a little bit. That's why I like these Beltrons. You can really wake up an older tube without risking hurting it. I never use the restoring function on this unless the gun's like dead or near dead. And again, if we go back down to 5 volts... It doesn't budge, so that's good. Okay. Well, since I obviously hadn't done that before on the CRT, I wonder if that would wake up the uh, brightness a little bit. Since it did have a dim picture, but that's probably because of uh, video processing and the like. So... Let's put it on the dim bulb tester and let's wake it up and see what it looks like then. Alright, so I'm going to leave the top cap of the horizontal disconnected. I've sprayed some cleaner into the uh, video and color pots and stuff like that. And uh, we're just going to put it on a dim bulb tester, energize it, reform the caps, and then see uh, what we're looking at. Alright, so I'm mistaken, because as soon as I plugged it in, the bulbs started glowing, so this does have instant on which explains why the CRT was so crummy. See, I thought it was just instant play mint uh, sound because of the hybrid thing, but nope, on this one, it's obvious that we're lighting the filaments because I can see down in there the horizontal starting to glow. So that's a feature that I'm definitely going to disable. So once the tube filaments have stabilized, we're going to turn this on. And that definitely uh, makes the bulb glow a little bit brighter, although realistically this isn't that bright. That's really how about how bright it is, but the camera likes to uh, exaggerate some. And so I'm going to let this run for about 5 or 10 minutes, and we're going to see if the electrolytic cans get hot. And if not... Then uh, we'll put the top cap on the horizontal output and see what happens to it. But so far, that bulb isn't getting much brighter, which is good. But we'll see. It is 50 plus years old. Meanwhile, I'll just watch the spectacular news on my uh, Toshiba Hybrid here. Which is for sale, by the way. This is one of these sets that I have decided to part with. And so, if you want a cool 1974 Toshiba tube transistor hybrid, it is up for sale. Anyway, we'll come back to this in a little bit. Alright, so it's been about 15 minutes. The uh, light bulb is just kind of staying where it's been staying at. Let me get a temperature reading on things here. Uh, 25 degrees centigrade, 23 degrees centigrade, tubes are hot as hell, 70 centigrade, 48 centigrade, oscillator tubes 39 centigrade, and obviously our horizontal output way over there. Doesn't have much of a load on it, so it's just kind of 30 degrees there. Okay. So 
So let's go ahead and juice it and see what happens. Let me turn this off. And we can see we're still in standby mode here. It is drawing a little current. That's a 95 watt bulb, by the way, so the fact that that's glowing at all, that's like probably 40 or 50 watts just sitting there idle, which is scary. So let's see. Let's get the uh, top cap connection here. Let's reattach that. You got your high voltage bell fuse there. Let's see if the high voltage starts or if it goes down in a ball of flames. Oh yes, I gotta take it off the dim bulb tester. Duh. Otherwise there's not gonna be enough current to start the horizontal. So let's go over to the isolated side too. So when it's not on the limiter, that's probably oh I don't know, 70% heater voltage right there. Listen for the noise and watch for the fire. And there we go. Got something there. A lot of hum coming from that speaker. Trying to get channel six. Just thinking about it. Yeah, it's trying to. The picture's getting a little brighter with time. Let's uh, see if we can get the signal generator hooked up to it somehow. The camera is compensating for the white balance but that is a very red picture. It's almost like, I don't know, let's see if we can get on this for a little bit. And uh, yeah, it's still not picking it up. It's super red. That hum is growing louder as it's on. I'm a little concerned about that. And our convergence is just awful, you can see there. Uh, all right, let me see if I can get the signal generator hooked up. Okay, so with the signal generator hooked up, we do have a uh, pattern here. Yeah, there's our nice amber color. But you can see the picture is definitely skewed. And it's starting to get a little bit better the longer it's on. But that's like, that's our max brightness range. And as soon as you back off that a quarter turn, it's just dark. And then you got all that extra range. So I'm not really, that could be better. Uh, let's see here. Let's go to about maybe 60% brightness. Oh yeah, that was with the contrast all the way up. Contrast at half point there. See, we're not doing any work yet. Right now, I'm just trying to gauge the health of this thing. So I'm going to reach back here, tweak the screen controls, and hopefully we don't have a flashover from a bad tin whisker. Purity on that's terrible. Da -da 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 -da. Oh yeah, we could do some purity adjustments, couldn't we? Of course, I don't have my degaussing wand, so maybe not the best idea to do that just yet. Okay, well anyways, back to the grayscale. Man, that blue is like unresponsive. Oh, there we go. Flash, flash, flash! 
Is the blue control bad? Because it makes like no response. Let's see, let's crank up L brightness again. Yeah, that blue is like unresponsive. Okay, let's go back to red. The blue's not happy. All right, there's some form of a grayscale. And then we got craptacular convergence, but that video response just sucks. I mean, just really sucks. Like no contrast or brightness. We do get some brightness out of that. So it could be that control's bad since it really doesn't do a whole lot. It could be we've got a bad blue driver. The CRT tested okay, but you know, how okay? Uh, let's come over here. Let's switch over to something finer. The hum is still pretty loud. You can hear it through the speaker. It's just loud. So there's some filter that's opening. Uh, let's try our regular color pattern. Do we have color? We got little color sparklies. Let's see if uh, this changes anything. No color. That doesn't really surprise me. But we got little colored speckles, which is weird. Increasing the generator output doesn't solve anything. So we got no color right now. That could be a color killer thing. That could be a burst amp not working, missing voltage, whatever. Uh, let's... No primaries. That doesn't change anything. Oh yeah, also what's true is the uh, horizontal is like way off. And I know there's a a slug adjustment back here. The core's missing off of, like somebody bashed it. That could have been me for all I know. Let's see if I can get a tool in there. One of my many alignment tools. Because the color, the horizontal hole being off may affect the color. So what we're going to do is tune this off station so that our horizontal breaks up like that. And then I'm going to come back here and tweak this. Here we go. Oh, does anyone see that rainbow pattern there? Interesting. So we got rainbow pattern like it's trying to do something with the color but it's not like bad oscillator but uh, still no color when I switch back here up oh, ooh, there we go see horizontal effects color and we can see that the oscillator is kind of off there the tin control does nothing except that it's extreme so that could have something to do with it too we might need to source a See it going to the other end of it. Nope. Sometimes it does. It's like really sensitive. So let's go back to our regular bars. And you can see it's got major problems locking in. Okay, let's readjust color again, or uh, horizontal. Locky, locky. Oh, it doesn't want to lock. Look at that. No sync. Huh. 
Huh. So maybe we got tuner issues too. Because it's certainly pissed off about that. And we might have an alignment problem, who knows. But Leah, like off, off frequency there, if I dial it in so that we get some sort of lock, and then go back to channel three, I got no color. It tries though, right at the end of the range, right before we got issues with uh, break up there. We definitely got some hum in the color. You can see it rolling up the screen there, but we do have it. And then this tint control is pretty much dead. So I'm going to have to find a source for that or something of this equivalent nature. So we have incorrect phasing because, well, it's tense either one thing or another. And if I adjust it for green over here, we lose everything over here. And if I adjust it for red over here, we lose green over here. It's just a bad shift. And there's the timeout on the generator. It's five minutes. And you can see we definitely have phase lock problems with the color. And it, it tries. It definitely tries. And AF, AFT problems, too. So... This thing has got a mess of stuff wrong with it, and that's probably why I mothballed it. It's just because it's a mess. So, but it, it has stable high voltage. The blue screen, screen control really does nothing until you're at its maximum range, and it's like, again, like the tint control, it's like an on and off. So I may need to find an, a, a method for the screen control that works. Yeah, so anyways, this thing's a long way from being nice, but the fact that we have some signs of life is good. I, uh, the video response sucks, but that could be bad caps and stuff too. And we have brightness, but again, it's only at the very end of the range. At least this has something in the way of a usable range. And it just, the tuner is like ultra sensitive. So we could have alignment issues too. I really don't know. Anyway, at this point, then we got to disable the, the instant on, but that's a whole nother thing. But there it is for now. Awakened from its slumber. And uh, now I know why I mothballed it. Just so much stuff wrong with it. And I'm sure it's gotten worse from sitting for a decade. So this will be uh, part one, and then as I have time, I'll get to this thing, and we'll play around with uh, recapping it, and then uh, find a tin control, do some troubleshooting and setups. It's just definitely going to be a multi-part, but it's cool to see it work. I didn't think it was going to fire up, actually. So that's that for now. Thanks for watching the video. More stuff to come.